I just spent the last half hour talking at a camera that wasn't recording. So, uh, I'm sorry in advance, everyone, but this video is going to be a little bit unorthodox in that I'm probably not going to be as thorough as I normally am, and I'm just going to go through it pretty quickly because I just don't have it in me to go over that entire thing again. So today we're looking at, as you can see, Generation Selects, Galactic Man, Shockwave, and as a bonus, I'm going to throw in Legacy Core Class Shockwave. And I really like this Shockwave. I cannot explain why. I had Seed Shockwave and I thought he was alright, but I just wasn't all that enamored with him. Which is so weird because Galactic Man Shockwave is the exact same figure, just in gray instead of purple. Has all the same absurdly over-the-top battle accoutrement. It's just gray and not purple, with a red eye and not yellow. I can't explain it, but this color scheme for this figure makes this so much cooler for me. Legacy Core Shockwave is also here. Um, yeah, let's just move him off to the side and talk about Legacy Core Shockwave for a minute. I like this Shockwave. It is cute and effective. Uh, it's this thing I don't like. This thing has nowhere good to go in robot mode. You can plug it into his hand as like some kind of gun, which from this angle looks okay, but from this angle it makes it look like he's got a big claw hand that's trying to offer you up a pizza or something like that. You can plug it into either one of his shoulders, which like it's a place for it to go, but it looks terrible. And as you saw, there's a peg hole on the back of this thing that can peg onto the tip of his blaster cannon hand. So that gives him a weird little radar metal detector hand, which I just, I don't like this piece. But the problem is it's kind of necessary for the alt mode because that alt mode, it kind of needs this extra splash of color and extra shape. So there's really no good place to put this. I really wish you could have just this as the robot mode. And I mean, you can if you toss this to the side, but if you toss this to the side, then the alt mode suffers. Like, all they needed to do was have a freaking little peg hole on the back here so you could, like, plug this in on the back just to get it out of the way. That's all they needed to do, and it's not there. And that bums me out. There is a peg hole on this side, on the underside of the backpack, because that's the top of the alt mode when he's transformed, but that's that doesn't help. That doesn't solve the problem. Yeah, I hate this thing. <laughs> but the colors on Core Shockwave are nice. It's a pretty nice dark purple with some silver accents and that nice yellow eye. And I think they painted the face. It's really hard to tell because it's very tiny and the lighting in here is not the best, but I think they painted the face some kind of silvery, not silvery, but like a metallic color of some kind. It definitely doesn't seem to be purple, but it gets the job done. And it does look like Shockwave, you know, it's got the hexagonal squished face, the ears, the eye. It, it's good, it's cool. It's covered in greeblies, and I feel like this is supposed to evoke a uh, Siege Shockwave, which is why I have this guy with this guy because I kind of feel like this is meant to be this, though, you know, the, the purple version of this. They kind of work together. Uh, in terms of articulation, Core Shockwave can look left and right, so I appreciate that they put that in there. The arms can go up at this joint in the torso, as well as up at this ball joint in the shoulder, so the arm can go way up. They can go around all the way, though this tab that's uh, necessary for the transformation can butt into the backpack, so you kind of have to angle things around if you want to rotate it all the way around. You got a ball jointed elbow, so you can bend 90 degrees and rotate. There is no waist articulation, but given how this thing transforms, that's fine. The hips can go forward a little past 90, can go back uh, not quite to 90, but if you get the backpack out of the way, they can go past 90. They can go out to 90. You get a little bit of rotation of that ball joint that could work as a thigh swivel, but the knee is also a ball joint, so you can rotate it down there. And because of the transformation, that knee can go all the way in. 
so pretty decently poseable. The only thing that stinks about the design for this guy is uh, the hips shift forward. Like, there's this panel here that shifts into the body that uh, it doesn't peg or clip into place in any way. It just sits there. And if that clipped into place, that would be great because it's really a little bit too easy to shift this forward and like end up pulling this out of place a little bit. So yeah, I, I just, I really don't like this joint. I wish it was more snug. So yeah, that is Core Shockwave's robot mode to transform him into his vehicle mode. I'm going to rotate the arms at the shoulder so that they're pointing backwards and then bring them up, then fold out these little winglets, which are tucked along the back, so fold those around, bring this up, and as you bring this up, you want to push down on the head to start moving it into the body, so push down on the head to start that moving, then this will come up, and these uh, pegs on the shoulders and forearms will peg into the panel on the back can be a little tricky to get them all lined up at once, but it is doable. Now we can take this and plug it into that hole that's finally been exposed. So we can use that. That joint that's kind of annoying will shift forward, and that kind of recenters the hips. And that will allow you to rotate the knees in so that they can fold up. And there's a little notch here that you want to get under this little bit here because there is a little, let's see, there's like a little tab there. So you want to bring this in and push that in place and that tab will keep this from moving around. Bring that around, slide it in, peg it together. And here is Core Class Shockwave's alt mode and it looks very reminiscent of Seed Shockwave's alt mode with all the junk slapped on it. Uh, the only problem with this is, if you look at it from the side, you can see it's like this really weird kind of sloping up shape that makes it just feel off-center, not properly bulky down here. I really wish they had done something here, because when I look at this thing from certain angles, it feels like it isn't, but it feels like this section is pointing up, because there's just so much bulk here versus what's going on back here just doesn't sit right, by which I mean it physically looks like it doesn't physically sit right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's fine. It's got some nice detailing. Got a little bridge up there. Let's see if you can actually see that. A teeny tiny bridge right there. And, you know, some nice paint on the what were the toes and the little side vents on the legs. It's not a bad core class figure. I just don't like this piece, and you can leave it off if you really want to, but that does take a lot, I think, away from the vehicle mode, because this just bulks out that center mass a little bit better and gives it this nice big silver and red focal point. It is not 100% necessary, but compared to, say, Core Class Studio Series 86 Ratchet, this feels a little bit underdone. Also, you've just got his his fist and gun hands just sticking out of the back. Kind of feel like they could have done something else with these, but whatever. Let's move on to the star of the show, Galactic Man Shockwave. As I said, I love this figure, which is weird because I wasn't really into Siege Shockwave, but this guy is just really cool. I mean, it's the exact same figure, the same molding, the same everything. It's just the colors and the... Galactic Man paint up there and the lack of Siege Splatter. But it just works so well for me in this color scheme. It looks imposing. Color separation is nice. It still is very obviously Shockwave. Like, there is no mistaking this design. Like, that chest and that head with the left hand gun hand <laughs> and the tube and the backpack. Like, this is undeniably Shockwave. Regardless of the colors, there is no mistaking this for anyone else. And I really like that about this figure. You can ruin it with all this junk. Like you can pop all this stuff apart, pop all that apart, take this, and put this on his back. And just 
settles down. Come on. There we go. So you can clamp this down on his back if you really want to make it bulkier for some reason. You can take the uh, these little gun things and peg them to his feet to give him gun, gun toes again if you must. That makes him ever so slightly taller. And then these things, these stupid I hate these things, but you can unpeg these little arms and these will, these pegs will peg into the sides of the shoulders. So you can give him big gun grip shoulder pads and forearms for some reason. I hate this. I mean, it's fine. I don't dislike the extra bulk that it adds, but it just is so slapped together. This is something where they were like, what can we do with all this junk? And I'm just not into this. I really prefer much simpler, more streamlined look that they did for it. So, you know, you can just switch back to it. But yeah, this is, uh, this is not doing it for me. I will say I've seen some cool fan mode stuff. Uh, I don't remember the specifics for some of it, but like I've seen some people do a uh, long arm prime, Not strong arm prime. Yes, I know, I know. It's been like four years. Y'all need to freaking get over it. I've seen like a long arm prime fan mode someone did. Um, also a thing that I saw that looked really cool is you can take this thing, which this is, I hate this piece the most. It's cool. It's really cool in the, uh, in the vehicle mode, but in robot mode, I hate it so much, but you can take this and, uh, how did they do it? For some reason, I'm having a really difficult time remembering how it was set up. Basically there was a way to peg this into Shockwave's hand that, uh, made it work like a bow and arrow, which looked really cool. And I wish I could remember how I did it because it's actually not that complicated. It just requires moving things at a certain angle. I just don't remember what it is, but there's a way to peg this into his hands so that it's like a big bow and arrow. And that's kind of neat, but still this piece just gets in the way and I don't like it. And if you really wanted to, you could peg this on you're supposed to fold these all the way in, but I'm going to leave them up because I'm just too lazy. But you can peg this in here. Actually, do it this way. Let's get these bits out of the way. You can peg this in here. And peg this in here. And then bring all of this together. And that will peg together. This can peg together, and then these bits, just straighten those out, and these will peg into the sides here. There we go. And now you have this drone surfboard thing that I absolutely hate. But if you wanted to, you could put him up here and have him surfing on all this junk. It's just, I really wish that they had released this guy as this, like just the core figure, no extra parts, and this would have been plenty for me. I am doing a lot of complaining about this stuff. Partially that's because I'm still cranky about spending a half hour of my life talking to a camera that wasn't recording, but it's also because I just don't like it. But it helps that I got this guy on sale. I think it was like $37, $38. And uh, I also had a gift card, so he ended up not only costing me less, but technically costing me nothing. So that helps take the sting off of these bits. 
And to be clear, I'm not saying they shouldn't have included those parts. I'm just saying it would have been nice if they had a version of this shockwave mold that you could get without those parts automatically included, because this is enough to stand on its own. This really doesn't need the extra parts to be awesome. Anyway, let us move along to size comparisons. And uh, yeah, the, the extra bits, they don't really add much in the way of height, they more add bulk, so we're just gonna leave him like this for size comparisons. Here he is with, uh, let's adjust again. Here he is with a bunch of mainline kind of standard sizes so you can see how he stacks up. And he is basically Voyager height, maybe a little shorter than a current Voyager, but he's around that size. Which, as far as I'm concerned, let's adjust this, but as far as I'm concerned, I think that size is totally fine. You know, like, like I said, I'm kind of over the Voyager as a leader, deluxe as Voyager price debacle thing, because in some cases it makes sense. For Shockwave, uh, no, <laughs> the them bumping him up to a leader price point is specifically because of all this extra crap. But at the same time, I do kind of understand it because I feel like if they released him like this at the Voyager price point, people would probably complain because he's too simple or something like that. So they probably felt like they needed to add more stuff to sweeten the deal. I would have still preferred them releasing this as a Voyager with just this, but hey, whatever. And with all of that out of the way, let us transform Galactic Man Shockwave into his alt mode. Because, yeah, I know we're doing things in a weird order this time, but that's because, as I said, I had a recording debacle. So, first thing we're going to do is disconnect the hose on the back of his arm, and uh, I would highly recommend pulling from this plastic plug piece, not from the cable itself, because I've seen pictures on, like, TFW where this thing got shredded. So, yeah. Uh, I would recommend pulling from this, not from this. But just pull that out to get it out of the way, because we're going to need to move these arms around. Uh, I personally rotate the biceps around 180 degrees. I don't think this is strictly necessary, but I do it specifically because... I'll straighten out the legs while I'm at it. I specifically do it because of what goes on with this armature here. So you want to disconnect the backpack and open this up and uh, actually we got to take care of the head I'm doing things in terrible order because I'm all thrown out of whack because of that whole recording thing but anyway pull this open fold the head in push it back in and put that in there and now the head is nice and tucked away so now this can come out like this the arms can move up on both hinges in the shoulders to come up like this and they kind of meet in the middle and this comes up around them and then this will fold down and fold down and nestle around those arms and then you just want to give this section a squeeze to make sure it all lines up and now this is why i bent the elbows around because there's a hinge here that allows this bit to rotate down this way so when these elbows are facing the other way you can actually bend the barrel of the gun down, or I'm sorry, the end of the submarine. You can bend it like that. So with the uh, the hinges going this way and this way, they kind of counteract each other so this doesn't actually bend. Uh, now, going to just leave this off to the side still. Uh, now we're going to come down to the legs, straighten out the toes, rotate the legs around 180 degrees, and disconnect these panels from the sides of the legs. Bring them out and up a little ways, and now the legs will hinge in like this, and hinge in, and then they will plug together back here. And then these bits will plug together. And now there's a tab that forms here that will plug into what used to be the robot mode stomach. And those just tab in like so, and then you can flip up these little wings on the side here. This comes up, plugs into here, and there we have Galactic Man Generation Selects Shockwave, Generation Selects Galactic Man Shockwave, whatever 
in his submarine mode. The submarine mode. That is fine and dandy, and we are totally going to do a little bit of uh, unofficial fan moding. I'm doing this a lot in this video too, but yeah, this comes up and around. I'm just plugging it in here, and then fold these up. And now, oh look, it's still submarine. Oh wait, look at that. It is Shockwave's space magnum mode with a tiny handle, but hey, it still gets the job done. And this is cool. I like this. Even if it doesn't fit my hand quite right, this is neat. Uh, it gets, you know, all the right points across. Uh, the feet are just kind of hanging out there. It would be cool if those did something, but given everything else that's going on with this figure, I kind of understand why. But I also feel like if they had attempted this figure now, if they did, like, Voyager to Leader Price Point, they could add more parts, more of a deco to it and, you know, have the feet tuck away better, have these bits get covered up better. They could do more to this. But this is what we got. And what we got is still pretty cool. We got the silver on the handle, which is obviously a handle, which is exactly where it needs to be, and the overall shape is just solid. Really nice barrel. It's just a really solid, simple, but solid alt mode that is classic Shockwave, and I really like this. But we can ruin it further. So just put him back in his submarine mode. And keep him like that for now. And bring in all this extra stuff. So you can bring this in and plug this in to either side like that. Bring this in and this door will kind of come down and go over this little nubbin on the shoulder. And there is actually a tab and a slot on the side here that that plugs into. Bring all that in and these bits will plug together and this will plug in. For some reason I have a hard time getting this side to line up. Like this side specifically always likes to fight me. Okay, so with all of that plugged in, now we've got this bigger barrel thing and I mean I guess if you wanted to you could still use it as the <laughs> space magnum mode with just a really big barrel on the end. So you've got these bits that will plug together and you've got big peg, little peg, big hole, little hole. And those will plug in and line up and then that fin comes off to the side. Same deal here. Fin goes off to the side and the various ports and plugs and whatnot line up and plug together. And lastly, the uh, peg and tab will go into the slot and peg hole, so that will keep it from spinning around too much. And there we go. There we have Seed Shockwave, Galactic Man Shockwave's uh, massive battleship mode. And this is cool. I actually think this is really cool. I like the shape, I like all the angles, the coloration is nice. I kind of like how you've got the primarily dark gray and silver back here, and then you get just the nice light gray towards the front. Something about that separation I really like. And this is just a really cool battleship mode, which unfortunately is burdened with a ton of extraneous parts. But these parts ended up doing something better than what we actually got with all the bits slapped on the Shockwave. I would be way more into this figure or would have been way more into it. But thankfully I can just take these parts off and throw them in the closet and not think about them. So in this context, it doesn't really bother me, especially because I knew what I was getting into this time and I got them on sale and, you know, didn't technically pay for them. So <laughs> that is fine. I just wish you could do more with all the extra stuff. Bringing in uh, Core Class Shockwave again, you can see how they're basically like, this is meant to evoke this. Clearly the colors are different because this is meant to be more Seed Shockwave and not Generation Select Shockwave, but still, the overall shape is pretty close. The bridge, the tiny bridge, is actually very similar to the bridge up here, just a little bit more stylized and tiny. You don't have the giant radar dish on this thing, but it's still a very similar shape, very similar design. 
yeah, I think this is really cool as an alt mode. I just wish it didn't require all of these parts that don't do anything interesting outside of this alt mode. Let's move on to size comparisons because I have been recording this one figure for a very long time and I just want to stop. So uh, let's readjust again. Here is the shockwaves with some more contemporary mainline sizes. So yeah, I mean this with all the stuff slapped on, it does come off as like a leader sized vehicle. But again, it's just so much of that stuff is extra parts. And it probably come as no surprise, let's look down a little bit, that uh, core shockwave is about the same size as other core shockwave, and so core shockwave versus leader class shockwave kind of you know, kind of shakes out about how you'd expect. And yeah, it's uh, I don't know what else I could say about this. I feel like I've said it all already, but I may have said it in the last attempt at recording this. I don't know. But yeah, I think that is going to do it for the shockwaves. And uh, I really, really wish that, well, one, I wish that this guy didn't need that ridiculous radar dish because I really don't like that thing. Uh, but two, it really would have been nice if Seed Shockwave or Generation Select Shockwave or whatever didn't come with all that extra stuff. Again, I know why they did, and I feel like, you know, it'd, it'd be like a waste because this stuff's probably like spread all over the molds, so or the steel molds, so they probably can't just be like, oh, let's just make the central figure. But I just, these things are, eh. These are going back in storage now that this video is shot, because I do not like these extra bits. They just get in the way. And they ruin, well not ruin, but they, they just kind of sour what is otherwise a really solid, simple, but solid and kind of purely designed shockwave figure. And I do really, really like the core robot. Not the core class figure, but the core robot for the uh, leader class set it is very neat. It's... I, I, feels weird to say, but I kind of feel like this is a perfect shockwave, at least as far as mainline stuff goes. Granted, I've never had the Masterpiece one, but like, I don't know, just in terms of like how straightforward and simple all of this is, I really, really like this shockwave. And like I said, the gray color palette, for some reason, really does it for me. This is an incredibly cool figure, and I'm very glad I got him, which is weird to say because I didn't really feel the uh, the purple one that much. But in gray, with that amazing, amazing red eye, it just glows very intensely. That light piping is amazing. This works so well for me. But that is going to do it for Generation Select's Galactic Man Shockwave. I, again, am sorry that this is such a weird, kind of scattered video, but I did not have a good time with how badly things went the first time around. Better if something than nothing, right? But regardless, what do you all think of this guy? Or Seed Shockwave. Or Core Shockwave. I almost forgot he was there because I'm just so enamored with this thing. Whatever your thoughts, feel free to chime in down below. I always enjoy hearing from you all. Thank you everybody for watching, and remember, it's just toys, so we're, we're just going to have fun, right?